My name is Shuri Tainav. I'm an assistant professor. We're at Stanford uh, Medical School. So I grew up in a small town near Tel Aviv in Israel. None of my family members were scientists. Uh, I had a mom who was a music teacher and a dad who was a pilot in the Israeli Air Force and then later become like um, a chemical engineer. I played a flute for many years. Uh, I was a swimmer. For a while I was on the fence whether to pursue um, a career as a physician scientist because I truly enjoyed clinical medicine and, and still do. Um, when you take care of a patient it becomes 100% um, and that's exciting. But I was following patients in my clinic um, that were all young and otherwise healthy but they were all having very severe um, complications related to, to their hepatitis C. With that came the desire to really change things um, on a larger scale. So what uh, we focus on is is trying to better understand interactions between viruses and the host, particularly um, the human host. And our overall goal is to try to identify host functions that are required by multiple viruses and use those as potential targets for broad spectrum antiviral approaches. We all come from different backgrounds, different countries, different schools, different philosophies of teaching and learning and different experiences and expertise. So it just, it, it really adds up and complements um, our, um, you know, daily experience. It brings in different technologies, different ways of thinking and of operating. It's, it is an adventure, I must say. Every project takes you to a different place and you learn with it new things. So this is a very exciting um, period to do research. Um, we have technologies that we did not have before that allow us to ask new questions and to be able to answer them in means that we were not able to do earlier. I've been uh, paying more attention into this area, this subcortical area that often gets a little bit ignored. So today, if you look at most approved um, um, antivirals, they target viruses individually, which is not a very scalable approach. This takes um, um, a long time, on average 12 years, to develop a drug and also involves um, very high cost um, in the order of over $2 billion per approved drug. There are over 200 viruses that are known to cause disease in humans, but um, there are only 10 viruses for which we have approved anti, um, antivirals available. And of course, morbidity and mortality associated with these viral infections is, is tremendous. And when I started thinking about it, I realized that we have to think differently and just targeting viruses individually is not going to solve this unmet uh, need. So this approach is now being advance into the clinic uh, for the treatment of dengue virus, which is an emerging virus causing um, significant morbidity and mortality uh, worldwide, um, particularly in tropical areas. But um, with global warming, there's a significant concern that this will spread um, in this country. We also showed significant efficacy in Ebola models. Um, so this was selected um, as an arm in sort of an in-drawer protocol should the outbreak um, resurges or a new outbreak will emerge. The ability to, the freedom that I get as a scientist to um, ask whatever question I'm passionate about answering and to be innovative and to um, discover is what drives me. So working as a physician scientist involves, involves a lot of risks um, taking um, and um, sometimes the greater the risks, the bigger the rewards are. But risks is something and, and disappointments is some failures is something we encounter almost on a daily basis. Uh, most of what we do is done for failure and um, it's really this persistence and you know, ability to, to go through this process and, um, um, and then harvest fruit is the, what, what defines a good, um, a good you know, um, physician scientists um, and scientists in general. I mean, it, it's not an easy path, you know, um, wearing these multiple hats, um, being, you know, a physician, being um, a scientist, a lab manager, a wife, a mother, a sister, a friend. I mean, it's just sometimes too many hits can be overwhelming. Um, but finding this balance between career and life, you know, I think it's, is, is a challenge still is. And as, a, as, a, as an early, as a junior faculty, I'm still working on, on doing this better. When I come home after a long day or after a long visit and look at my daughter in her eyes, uh, or said eyes, I know I'm doing the right thing because, you know, I'm, I'm following my, my dream and goals and um, it makes it easier. So I would encourage people, particularly earlier in their career development, and to really take the opportunity to think big and take more risks. I mean, um, some studies show that the biggest um, discoveries are actually happening earlier um, during someone's career. So just don't don't be afraid to think big. Um, there's not much to lose.